Meld is an easy to use alternative to OBS for streaming and recording on a PC or Mac. Here is your complete beginner's guide focused on TikTok live streaming. Stream key is probably your first thought here. Luckily, anyone can get them from free to join agencies. My verified list of agencies is both on screen and in the description. This entire page here is designed to answer all of your questions, including this FAQ at the bottom and including this 12 minute explainer video. All of these agencies are verified as providing high quality service alongside a free TikTok live stream key. So of course, let's begin with Meld by actually downloading it from meldstudio.co, that's without the M. And we're mainly focused on TikTok live, but Meld can also record for you. One of the best ways to grow your live stream is by creating highlight clips. This is where today's sponsor Riverside comes in and I'll put a discount and the link to Riverside both on screen and in the description. You can use Riverside's AI to make your own highlight clips with just a few clicks. So what I do is I simply click the upload button in Riverside to upload my own stream VOD. So here's one I uploaded earlier and I just scroll down a bit and check the magic clips section. I can specify clip lengths. For example, if I want to monetize it on TikTok, I might choose a minute or longer, or I can just set it to auto. And I like choosing topics to highlight. For example, I often talk about content creation in TikTok live, and then you just hit generate clips. And as you can see has already been done for me, I've got about 10 different AI generated clips. So if I just click edit into this one where I'm talking about different industry splits for payouts, you can see it's already been edited for me, including even adding it captions. But if I want to make any edits myself, I can just edit it on the text based timeline or the usual video editing timeline as well. And then I can export my clip with just a few clicks. And this is all done easily and smoothly with the magic clips feature provided by Riverside. And once again, I'll put my discount code and a link to Riverside both on screen and in the description. Thank you, Riverside. So let's get started with our meld setup, of course, by just opening it. So let's get it set up to look something like this. So let's start with the best settings. So we're going to click on file and preferences and starting in general, of course, enable multi canvas. That's going to give us both a landscape canvas and we can use this to stream to places like Twitch and YouTube and kick, or you can just use it for landscape recording for YouTube videos. And of course, it's going to give us a vertical canvas for TikTok live and YouTube shorts and Instagram if you want. And of course, for vertical video recording as well. So I like these settings 1080p on the landscape vertical is 1080p by default 60 FPS definitely recommend the hardware encoder and the video bit rate. This will be your stream upload speed. So I recommend between 6,000 and 8,000. Again, Meld has tried to give us good default settings. So I'm just going to leave this on standard and 160 on the audio bit rate. And if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to press add output. And if you're streaming on YouTube or Twitch, you can add those. If you're streaming anywhere else, including TikTok Live, click on custom RTMP. So I've deleted mine just to show you it again. To start with, I'm just going to edit where it says stream output and just change it to say TikTok Live. And our TikTok stream key is actually generated every single time. So you're going to have to edit this every time you go live. So while we're just setting it up, because we're not about to go live, we can just type anything into these two boxes. So I'm just going to type test. But of course, we need to go on the vertical canvas. Well, actually, we don't need to because you can stream in landscape on TikTok if you want. But for most people, I'm going to recommend vertical live streaming on TikTok live. Start the stream when you go live and just press back. And we've now added TikTok. Of course, custom RTMP can also be used to add kick and any other smaller streaming platforms as well. I do recommend multi-streaming on two or three platforms usually, so I'm going to add my Twitch as well. So I just pressed the login button to add Twitch and it's now added my stream key by default. So I'll press back and again, just keep adding other platforms as you want. Let's scroll down to recording and clipping. Pretty simple here. You just choose a destination, choose a format. It doesn't support MP4 for some reason. I'm going to choose QuickTime. And it looks like you can't record both the main and the vertical canvas. So depending on what you want to record, choose the correct option. For example, if I'm recording a landscape YouTube video while I'm streaming on TikTok live, I'll stay on the main canvas and press back. And we can also clip. So go into the clipping settings. Firstly, we have to enable the clipping in the top right and we're going to set a length. I like 60 second clips. Basically, this is going to automatically download the last 60 seconds of our stream when we press the clip button and it's going to save it into this location. And once again, I'm just going to go QuickTime 
I'm gonna go vertical this time, because usually for clips, we want the vertical to post them on short form platforms like Instagram, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok. And I'll press back. And I'm not gonna really be taking any screenshots, but you can choose a screenshot destination if you want. We don't really need to touch many of the other settings apart from virtual camera, where you should press the install button in the top right here. Especially do this if you don't have a stream key and you just wanna use TikTok Live Studio to stream on TikTok. And we'll show that later if you don't wanna use a stream key. And again, once again, the output canvas is wherever you're streaming to TikTok, either landscape or vertical. So our settings are good now. So let's close out of them. And those have auto saved. If you can't see this on the right, you can just click the arrow and it shows the platforms are streaming on and the virtual camera option. But let's now move to the actual stream setup and let's start by adding our headset and microphone. And this is the audio mixer at the bottom. I'm gonna press the plus button. And to start with, we're gonna rename where it says track. I've just double clicked on it. And we'll start with my headset, if I can spell it correctly. There we go. I just press select device. And I'm noticing as I am editing this video that I nearly got this section wrong. After you've pressed select device for your headset, if you have a headset like mine, it might have both a microphone and of course just the speakers. So of course for the speakers, we wanna click this drop down and make sure it's on output devices. And then make sure you click on the correct headset. And now we've added in our headset speakers and not the microphone. So again, just make sure you're adding an output device for your headset. And let's go back to the old version of me to add the microphone as well. Let's move on to adding our microphone. So another track, I'm just gonna rename this mic once again by double clicking, select the device so I can choose my quadcast microphone. So now my headset and mic are added, but I'm gonna add one filter to my microphone. I'm gonna add noise suppression. I've got some quite loud computer fans running in the background. I don't want the stream to hear that. So I'm gonna press the plus button that's above where it says mic for me and press magic mic. And I'm gonna press this button here to configure it. I'm gonna turn off the gain control and I'm gonna turn the level to very high. So this is basically very high noise suppression. And I'm gonna double click on magic mic and I'm just gonna rename it to noise suppression as well, just so it's more obvious what it is. For a basic setup, that's all we need, microphone and headset. We actually will add Tickfinity later. Let's focus on the actual more fun part, which is adding our stream, adding our camera and adding our display. So we're gonna start with scenes in the bottom left. Yours probably doesn't say camera, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a just chatting or camera scene and a gameplay scene. That's what many people will have. So the first one, just double click it, rename it what you want. It could be camera or it can be just chatting, something like that. Then we're gonna press the plus button again, double click on the second scene and I'll name this one gameplay. Of course, they're both blank right now, but we can click back and forth. Let's add stuff to them now. And basically just chatting for our example is just gonna be a camera. So once I've clicked on just chatting, you can see we've got layers at the top. And you can see this symbol next to layers dictates whether it's landscape or portrait. There's two ways to change between the two. First, I can just click between the two canvases and you can see the little icon in the top left is changing. I can also just click directly on the icon. So let's start with landscape. I'll press the plus button to add a camera. The camera is of course a video device and I can select it from the list. If this is not showing, you can choose it on the right hand side as well. It's one of my obs bot, let's see. Yep, that's the correct one. And let's just easily add it to the vertical canvas by copying and pasting. I'm just gonna right click copy. You can also just use control C on your keyboard. I'm gonna right click paste onto the vertical canvas. And I'm gonna press this nice button here, which is just gonna kind of nicely resize it for the vertical canvas. Then all I have to do is right click fit to canvas. And you can see I've now got my camera in both landscape and vertical. It's actually rounded the corners for me by default, if you can see. I probably don't want that in the full screen one. So I'm just gonna drag to unround them. It's not done it in this mode actually. So we'll add Tickfinity to this later. But for now, our just chatting scene is basically done. It's just the camera. So one last thing we'll do. If you wanna rename your camera, double click on it. For example, I don't need the word camera. I know what the Oswald Taylor is. You have to click between the two canvases. Make sure you rename it twice. And the other thing I'm gonna do is click between the two canvases and just lock it in place so I'm not accidentally dragging it around. So that's just chatting done. Again, we'll add Tickfinity in a bit. Let's move to gameplay now. So if I click on it, it's gonna fade out the camera. And let's start by adding in our gameplay or whatever is on the screen. I like to keep it simple just by adding in a display capture. This is just gonna show everything on the screen. Just keep that in mind. So again, we're starting in landscape mode underneath layers, press the plus button and it's a display capture. And I'm gonna choose my Samsung monitor. Pretty simple for landscape, that's all I need. I'm happy with the name of it. You can double click rename it if you want. I'll just lock it. And even when it's locked, it looks like I can right click copy and right click paste 
to add it to the vertical canvas as well. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna to have to unlock it again. There we go, I've unlocked it and I'll click on it. I'm just gonna use the very simple setup where people put their camera in the top third and their gameplay in the bottom two thirds. So let's drag it up roughly for now and we'll resize it later. So something like that is roughly the bottom two thirds. And let's click back into landscape and let's add our camera again. So once again, this is my Obswap Taylor camera. And of course it's too big for our purposes here. We just want a small camera. I'm gonna add it to the left side of the screen. So I'm gonna start just by dragging the corners to shrink it down, something like that. I can drag it down and follow the guidelines to bring it to the center. I can also drag these circles just around the edges a bit. And if I just click off the camera, you can see the corners have now been rounded. I also don't like my camera right hugging the left side. So I'm gonna click on it and just use the arrow keys to move it about 10 pixels to the right. So you can see there's now a little gap and it already kind of looks good here, but let's add one effect. Let's add a colored border. So I'm gonna click on the camera. And again, if you don't have these settings, then click the arrow on the top right corner to bring out these settings. And you can see on the right here, I'm gonna click on effects. There's so many effects. I'll press the plus button and you could play around with any of these, but I'm just gonna add a glow style. You can see it's added a nice thick white border. I'm gonna click the settings. I'm gonna change the color. I'm just gonna pick a yellow because that's kind of on my brand colors. Press okay. I think the border's a bit too thick, so I'm just gonna drag it down a little bit. And again, we can kind of click off to get an idea of the way it looks. That's good enough for me, but I'm gonna move it a little bit more to the right. Again, I like a little gap on the left-hand side. So there we go. We've now got a nice yellow border on our camera. Before we add it to vertical, I'm once again just gonna rename the camera slightly. And I'm gonna right-click copy and right-click paste. And then we can just drag it around and place it where we want. So something like that and just increase the size until we're happy. And then of course, we just have to make the relevant tweaks to get it looking a bit better. So I nearly had the display added correctly. I've just dragged it down a little bit. And you can see maybe our rounded corners and our glowing border looks maybe better in landscape compared to vertical. So we could just turn these off just by removing them and maybe just have a rectangular camera. You can set it up however you want. You might wanna add an image behind the camera, but I'll just turn it off to keep it simple. And then we'll just resize the camera till it's looking exactly the way we want it. And I'm also once again gonna unround the corners. Finally, just click back on to the monitor and we're gonna drag it up and there we go. But a nice looking vertical setup and a nice looking landscape setup. Let's do some final best practices here. Let's lock this and lock this and let's click back into landscape and make sure everything's locked. Again, now we just can't accidentally click it. Now let's move on to adding alerts to our TikTok live stream. We'll do that with Tickfinity. But just briefly, if you'd like to support my work, you can join me in my Patreon alternative called the Live Success Academy. We have posts, videos, and voice calls designed to help you accelerate your success as a live streamer and a content creator. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description and let's get back to adding Tickfinity. So of course we can increase the engagement in our TikTok live stream by adding alerts for new followers, subs, and gifters. The best platform for that is Tickfinity. I'll put my Tickfinity deep dive in the description, but let's look at some quick setup to add it easily and quickly to melt. So again, I'll link Tickfinity in the description. Just log in with Tickfinity, add your username, click on TikTok login and log in with TikTok. That's your basic Tickfinity setup. And then to add basic Tickfinity alerts, once again, I would encourage you to customize it for yourself. But if you just want to add it quickly, click on actions and events. If you don't get a pop-up that prompts you to add the predefined alerts, then click on the button at the top to add them. You'll either get this pop-up with this link that you have to click. So click that link if you see it and press OK. If you don't see the link, scroll down to overlay screen settings and click on the screen one link. So once the Tickfinity screen is copied to your clipboard, it's time to decide whether we're gonna add it to vertical, landscape, or both. That is up to you and your setup. I'm just gonna add it to both. So I've started by clicking on the vertical canvas. Under these layers, press the plus button and choose the browser option. We do have to make a few different changes here. Firstly, underneath URL on the right hand side, I'm gonna control A and then control V to paste in the Tickfinity URL. And you can see the image that appeared has now disappeared and that is correct. We're then gonna set a width and a height. I'm just gonna press unlock aspect ratio and I'm gonna try 600 by 400, but depending on your Tickfinity setup, you're gonna to have to play around with this number. Crucially, I'm also gonna uncheck lock size at the bottom. And from my experience, these are now good settings for Tickfinity's basic alerts. One more thing I'm gonna do on the left, I'm gonna double click browser. I'm gonna rename it to Tickfinity Alerts. 
press enter to confirm that and again we can just place these alerts where we want for example they don't appear all the time so i'll just place it over my camera and one more very important setting i'm going to add an audio track for the source and i'm going to press the q button here so that you can hear the audio alerts i'm just going to actually rename it one more time just to tick finity just so it's more clear in the audio mixer at the bottom and again you can see there was a lot of different settings to make there and what we've deliberately done here is only set it up on the vertical canvas for now because now i can just right click copy i can click onto the landscape canvas i can right click paste and if i click onto the tickfinity browser source you can see it's been now perfectly added with all the previous settings so we don't have to do it again we can just place the tickfinity landscape alert wherever we want them on the screen of course it's now time to test so you can see i've shrunk down tickfinity i'm just going to press simulate follow and that more or less looks decent. Maybe I would shrink the height to like 300, but just for the purposes of testing, that looks fine. Once again, I'll put my Tickfinity deep dive where I encourage you to create your own unique setup in the description. Just finally, as a best practice on the landscape canvas, let's lock Tickfinity, let's click into vertical and let's lock Tickfinity as well. Also worth noting, if I click into my just chatting canvas, we don't have Tickfinity added here. If we want it added in just chatting as well, once again, right click copy while I'm in gameplay, click into just chatting, right click paste, and Tickfinity is now added. If I unlock it, you can see where it's added. And again, if I click onto the vertical canvas in just chatting, I can right click paste. Again, if I unlock it, I can just place it anywhere on the screen like the middle, then lock it into place there and it's already locked into place in the vertical mode. Now, especially for multi-streaming, you might be wondering, how do I read my chat? Well, I'm told by Meld that a chat doc feature is coming. I'm not sure if it's gonna include TikTok Live. <laughs> so for now, if you want a good way to read your multi-stream chat or just your TikTok Live chat, then I'm gonna highly recommend Caster Labs. I'll put my longer guide for that in the description, but basically it combines the chat from Twitch, Kick, TikTok Live, and YouTube. It puts it all in one place and you can read the chat just from the Caster Labs app. So this is a free download for Windows. I'll put the link in the description. So we're pretty much set up for TikTok Live now. Just a word on what to do if you don't have a stream key. Well, as I said at the start, you can get them for free from free to join agencies. Again, the page in the description fully explains the whole process. But if you really don't want to join a free to join agency, you can enable the virtual camera, which we installed earlier in the top right corner. And you would make sure that you open meld studio first whenever you're going to stream to tiktok live then you would open live studio second and just add source find the camera option and press add and then again i've got so many cameras added here and i'm on one of my test accounts so i can't even add the virtual camera but basically just add the virtual camera as a camera source to tiktok live studio and what this is going to do is going to send your entire vertical meld canvas into live studio in other words everything we see here and this as well if you're on this scene will be sent into tiktok live studio and you just go live on tiktok with live studio here's one other handy feature you might find useful on meld if i click view at the top and click open and code it view this just helps you visualize where all your different feeds are going you can click on different things to see what's happening especially for the more advanced users this is very useful. So just finally, don't forget that your TikTok live stream key changes every time. So yes, it might feel annoying, but there's massive potential to streaming on TikTok live. So you're gonna have to pull a new stream key from the producer every single time. Once again, you get stream keys from free to join agencies. They'll basically unlock this page for you. And then what you're just gonna have to do every time is file preferences and then just edit your TikTok live settings and add your new stream key and URL here every time. And then you'll be ready to go live on TikTok. So I'll put my full stream key explainer video on the screen now. And again, I encourage you to add a unique Tickfinity setup to your stream. So I'll put my Tickfinity deep dive video on the screen as well.